welcome to the 21st century. Modern life is an assault on our gut bacteria. Every time you turn on the tap to make a cup of tea, what comes out? Water that's been, drink that's been treated at the municipal drinking water plant. Uh, and what do they do there? They add chlorine. Now, I'm not against that. I don't want to be treating cases of cholera and typhoid fever. It's okay. But why is the chlorine put there? To kill bacteria. And here we are drinking the stuff. And if you're using straight tap water, every bowl of soup you make with it, every cup of tea you make with it, um, is a dilute chlorine solution. It doesn't do great things for your gut bacteria. <laughs> And those uh, soft drink fans here, even the diet soda ones, uh, you're what, what gives these cola drinks their bite on your tongue? Phosphoric acid. Well, that uh, certainly kills bacteria outright. And also the artificial sweeteners they put in there foster the growth of not friendly bacteria. Coffee, tea. <clears throat> Don't want to make people too fear-filled here, but the oils in the bottom of a coffee, black, cup of black coffee, not friendly stuff if you're a bacteria. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the caffeine, I'm talking about the thing that makes coffee coffee. These coffee oils are bactericidal, um, as is tea and, and herbal teas. Oh, not herbal tea. Um, and again, a cup of chamomile tea in the afternoon is fine. But we're talking about real live biology here, and let's not kid ourselves, that chamomile plant is not making the chamomile oil for your afternoon tea. That, that's antibacterial oils that plant is making to keep bacteria from invading the stems and the leaves and the roots. Plant, plants get infections just like we do, and they want to keep those organisms out. And the peppermint plant is making peppermint oil to keep those bacteria out, and here we are drinking the stuff. And again, a cup of it from time to time is fine. But if you're someone who can't get through the afternoon without a constant cup of peppermint tea every, every hour, mm, probably not doing great things for your, the balance of your gut flora. Unless you're eating 100% organically produced uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, these uh, commercial produce uh, items have been sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. And the herbicides are specifically de designed to mess up the enzyme systems of plants. That's what herbicides do. Well, these are our cousins to the plant kingdom. And then there's good old alcohol. <clears throat> Glass of wine with dinner, beer on the weekend, <clears throat> six pack of beer on the weekend, bottle of Chianti for that Italian dinner in the hospital. We dip our surgical instruments into alcohol to kill bacteria. <laughs> and we are drinking this stuff. Oh, my doctor is good for me. Oh, cup of wine with dinner. Well, one's good, two must be better, and uh, lowers my cholesterol. Well, your gut bacteria don't care about your cholesterol. They just care about surviving, and that sure knocks the good guys down a good hoot. I'm getting more and more concerned every time I do the dishes at our house, and it lathers up and the dishes come clean. But no matter how many times I rinse it, there's always little bubbles going down there. There's got to be a thin film of detergent left on the inside of the glass, and the next glass of water I drink, down comes a detergent that dissolves the cell walls of bacteria. Um, getting, getting, I'm a little creepy about that, I suppose. Same with toothpaste. Have you, have you read the label of, on Colgate or Crest toothpaste, what's in there? The, the, uh, the uh, uh, triphosphate compounds, they put antibacterial triclosan, they put antibacterial compounds in the toothpaste, and you've got to swallow some every time, once or twice a day, month after month, year after year. What is that doing? <clears throat> and then there's antibiotics. <clears throat> um, as a physician, uh, this is a subject dear to my heart, uh, because when people get a uh, runny nose or scratchy throat, they go to the doctor and they will beg, cajole, or threaten the doctor until you pull out your prescription pad and write a prescription for amoxicillin or Cipro, erythromycin. Um, well, I really want to caution against this. <clears throat> Just parenthetically here, remember, in any biological system, any place where Mother Nature is doing her thing, whether the human body or a river valley in the Amazon, remember this, you can't do one thing. You can't do one thing. 
we're damming this river for flood control in the Amazon. Well, that's what you think you're doing, but you're also backing up stagnant water, which is going to increase the mosquito population, which is going to increase the malaria incidence, which is going to make you spray more pesticides, which is going to kill off the beneficial insects, which is going to allow the bark beetles to invade the trunks of the trees by the river, which is going to fall into the river and slow down the flow, warm up the river. You can't do one thing. In the body, the doctor says, so I'm going to give the child an antibiotic to clear his ear infection. That's what you think you're doing, doctor, but you're also killing off good bacteria down the gut that lets the pathogenic bacteria invade the gut wall and injure the gut wall and allow food proteins to leak out and, and flow through the joint membranes and set off juvenile arthritis or make his asthma worse. You can't do one thing. Everything we do sets off a cascade of events in our body, take him, go and help us out, buy some vitamin E for my heart. That's what you think you're doing. Vitamin A, it's good for you. No, high dose vitamin A gives hip fractures. Who knew? <clears throat> no, folic acid, good run. High dose folic acid gives women breast cancers and guys prostate cancers when you actually follow people along. Can't do one thing. So when you go and ask for that antibiotic just in case, not a good idea. Yeah. When you've got an official bacterial infection, you, you've got a bacterial pneumonia, you've got 104 fever and shaking chills and coughing up blood and pus, absolutely, boy, you are entitled to some antibiotics. Get them. But you've got the little scratchy nose, most of them, scratchy throat. Right now. If they're viruses. They don't respond to antibiotics anyway. But please don't take antibiotics just in case. And um, the vast majority of tonnage of, of antibiotics made in this country don't, don't go to people at all. They are fed to animals. They are fed to cows and pigs and sheep and chickens uh, that are raised in these atrocious factory farm operations to prevent infections from sweeping through the whole flock. And every chicken leg you gnaw on, every burger that you eat, uh, every, um, every uh, piece of, uh, of lamb chop, there are antibiotics in there. And they're alive, they're still active, and you're swallowing them with every, every meat meal that you eat.